Hey, this is Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and today we're going to talk about how to build an awesome CRM on top of Airtable. Now, this video is going to be a little bit different than some others you might find out there. We're not going to take you step by step and show, hey, here's how to create your very first context table, and here's how we add a custom field for the first time. There's lots of other videos. We'll have other videos out there to show you more step by step directions on how to get started with Airtable. Instead, we really want to focus on how can you enable your sales team to have a great experience to close deals faster by using Airtable. And so that's what we'll get into today is how can we really focus on that best of breed experience inside of Airtable. So to get started, we're going to talk a little bit about the overall architecture of our CRM. Now, I started with a template. You can actually find this within the Airtable universe and within their template section. You can actually just click the button, which is going to spin up your own copy of this template. And it's not to say you need to start that way. Uh, oftentimes they start from scratch because you can really tailor it to your own personal needs. But I think just for the purposes of getting some good demo data in there, it makes sense to start with this template. Now, when I talk about the architecture of the CRM, largely I'm getting at whether you think of yourself as a B2B business to business or B2C business to consumer organization. A lot of my background is on the B2B side, selling uh, enterprise software. And so if that's the case, oftentimes you're talking about opportunities or deals that might span over six months, 12 months, even more sometimes. And because of that, you need to track all the interactions. There's a variety of stakeholders within a given organization, and you want to be able to track that account or organization record itself. Now, that's not necessarily the same as if you are just selling to individual consumers. If you're selling a course to individuals who are going to purchase it, you're not going to need all of that extra information. So in this example, you're going to see some things that look a little bit more B2B oriented, but that's not to say that you can't utilize a lot of the same principles on the B2C side. So as we take a look through the template, you'll notice that we have accounts, which are the organizations, we have contacts, we have opportunities, which are the deals, interactions where we're tracking uh, different events, different meetings, discoveries that took place. And then I've added a couple of additional tables that we'll talk about in a moment as well. But let's start towards the beginning of the sales cycle. Um, just talk about the flow of leads as leads come into the system. And so one of the ways that we can help aid in that process is by creating a form that we set up. So I created a contact submissions area and this is really basic. I'm just showing this kind of for the purposes of an example here. And I designed a quick little contact form. And this is something where we're just capturing a name, email address, and asking, hey, how can we help you? Now, you don't have to utilize Airtable's forms. There's lots of other great alternatives like JotForm out there that you might want to use instead. But this is a way that we can quickly be able to capture information in the system. This is something that you could use by publishing this form out on your website as a contact submission form. You might send it as part of an email marketing campaign where they click a link and then fill out a form. That's another way to be able to capture that data. But just in general, there's a million different ways that we as a sales team want to be able to capture lead information from uh, prospects who are interested in the products that we have. So again, very simple in nature. Of course, we could make it a little bit more uh, enticing, I think, uh, from a sales standpoint, but just to show you an example. Now, this is pretty standard. I mean, it's great that this comes with forms that we can utilize, but we went a step further to be able to say, you know, when someone contacts us, if you are a B2B organization, you're going to want to know more about them and you want to see, hey, are we already doing business with them? So for example, if there's an account that I've been working for six months already, and then suddenly someone else from that team reaches out, I don't want a different sales rep to go start answering questions for that person. I want them to be associated with the same account record that we have. So I just want to show you an example of what we've done to help ease that process a little bit. Uh, and I created an automation. And again, if you're not too familiar with Airtable, so Airtable's got kind of the main database and different views to look at, at those records. But we also have a really powerful automation suite where we can automate a lot of back-end processes to update records, send notifications. And we'll show you a few examples in this video. So this particular one uh, that I called was to create a contact and account from a form submission. And so what we're doing, and I'm not going to get into all of the logic, 
But the idea here is we want to solve for that problem where we're already working with an account. How do we associate that contact record to a new account? And so in this case, what we're doing is when a contact form is submitted, then we're going to go ahead and try to see if we can find an existing account record based off of their email domain. So if I hop uh, over for a second back into that grid view, so we're asking the user for their name, their email, and how we can help. But what we're doing is I actually have a formula field here. And what this formula field is doing is it is chopping off the domain part of their email address. So of course I have just some dummy data in here if Elon Musk were to contact us. So we're chopping off the Elon and the at symbol and we're ending up with the email domain of tesla.com. And the reason that we're doing that is because that automation then is cross-referencing to see, hey, do we already have an account that exists? So we do. We have Tesla and the Apple was the other example that I utilized. So if I go back into that automation, essentially what we're doing is we're saying, you know, if we're able to match the email domain from the submission record with the email domain of the account record, okay, then we're going to go ahead onto the next step. We're also looking to see if there's other contacts um, that exist with that email address. And so essentially what we're saying is if there isn't already a matching account, let's go ahead and create a new account record. So if there's no account, then create that account record. So if I came in and said, you know, hi, I'm from Zoom. We don't have a Zoom record. That Zoom record is now going to be created. And we're also going to create that contact record to say, hey, this is Dan Lehman from Zoom. And then we also have logic to say, if there is a matching at an account record, so if I'm already, if we already have a Zoom account record or an Apple account record for that contact, but that contact doesn't exist in the system yet, then we're going to go ahead and just create that contact record and associate that with them. And so if I go and I open up my Apple account record, we're able to see that we have two separate contacts that are associated with that record. And that's oftentimes what happens with larger, more complex organizations is that you have multiple contact records. And so what this automation is an example of is being able to automate that process to identify those right accounts. Because again, your sales reps aren't gonna want to have other people stepping on their toes, especially when they're working so hard to close those deals. So that's just an example of how we can use an automation in the lead tracking process. Now I want to talk a little bit more about deal management. Hey, we have opportunities in the pipeline. Awesome. Where do we go next? Well, if I click on my opportunities record view, you see we've got lots of color coding. We've got the different statuses so we can see our pipeline. A pretty visual view to begin with anyways. But, you know, oftentimes, especially sales managers are going to be able to want to see this in a much more visual view of let's actually be able to see their status to be able to, to progress through the pipeline. And so here we have a different view, which is utilizing a Kanban, which is a sales pipeline. And so this is where we can see the same exact data. It's not a different set of data. It's the same thing we're seeing here as, the, as our all opportunities. But we're not limited to seeing things just in this record view. Instead, we get the ability to view it more visually. And as we're doing a, a sales review for that week, for the quarter, we're able to move along uh, deals through the progression. And when we do that, it's actually updating that status automatically. And of course, we can still click in and be able to view all the details of our opportunity records. So we're not just restricted to something that feels like a database. We can use whatever makes the most sense. And we have lots of other kinds of views that we can utilize. Um, calendars are really popular for sales teams being able to see the, see the timeline. Gantt charts are a little bit more for the project management side, but you get the idea that we've got quite a few capabilities within the platform. Next, I want to take a look at calendar integration. And you'll notice that the that default template, if, if you spun up a copy for yourself, has a table for interactions. Right now, this is grouped by the account, but you can see we have things like discovery and demos, pricing discussions. And of course, you can configure this how you would like yourself. But one of the things this doesn't really do is, you know, do you want your salespeople wasting a lot of time manually having to create all of their account interactions? I mean, it can be helpful um, in terms of due diligence, but salespeople don't love that, right? They, they want it to be automated and easy. So this is a perfect example where we can utilize synced calendars or synced tables in general. 
So this is one of those tables that I added for synced calendars. And what we're able to do is you can actually click to drop down if you were going to add a new table. And you see a variety of options to be able to sync data from, it could be another Airtable base. But in this case, I'm pulling from Google Calendar and I authenticated with my Google Calendar. You notice you can also do Outlook. So regardless of which you prefer for your organization, and then there's other tools as well that you can sync to pull that data. And so what this is doing is I, once I've authenticated and it has my Google Calendar, it's going to take a certain time range and be able to pull any events that I have and pull that to keep that in sync with the table. Now, I, I do want to be clear, this is a one direction sync. So that means that when I have new calendar invites and they can be deleted and updated and things like that, but now it's going to push them over into Airtable. This is not going the other direction. So you're not creating an event inside of Airtable and then having that push that out to your Google Calendar. There is some other syncing options we can talk about, but for this, it's just a, a unidirectional sync into the system. But it gives you the ability, this is a fairly recent development, where you can sync multiple calendars. So you could have your sales team's calendars all be synced in here, and then you could have it show up as a, a calendar view to be able to see your sales team. Now, this is where you might be saying, well, Dan, what's the point of this? Like, we all have Google Calendar, we can see each other's calendars, no big deal, right? But where this is really important is when it comes to doing your deal reviews and seeing how often you're contacting and what those types of contacts you're having with the individuals, the stakeholders, the decision makers, the champions at your companies that you're working with. And so what I've done here is, uh, again, utilizing the power of calculated fields with our formulas and automations, we're able to get a little bit deeper here to associate this with the correct contact. So what I'm doing is I've got, uh, let's open this up, our formula, where essentially I'm looking at this attendees field. And in the attendees field, there can be multiple attendees. And I'm just separating that out so that when we get to the automation step and we're syncing a calendar, essentially all we're able to do is when a, a record is updated or we can run it on when it's created, we're going to see if we can find a record, find a contact record that matches that email address. And then if it does, now we're going to actually associate that synced calendar event with the contact record. And this is something that we could do at an account level if we wanted to do as well. So it's, you know, you've got some options on how you want to configure it. But this becomes immensely helpful because now instead of just this like interactions table that updates itself, now if I go to my contacts table, little Steve here, when I open this up, now this presentation that was on my Google Calendar, because it was associated with his email address, that's automatically going to be synced into the system, automation is going to run, and it's going to put it against his record. So now we're actually able to see kind of a better picture into that story of what exactly is going on here for each contact record, or again, do a similar thing for the account records that you have. I'm back in my opportunities here. We're going to talk about how to be able to create a proposal or be able to create a, a quote that we want to be able to send out to our customers, very common use case for CRMs. So I'm on an opportunity and let's say I want to go ahead and send this to my customer. I can simply go ahead and click a button to generate quote. And then when I am over back on my automations, I've got an automation that's running here. And this is gonna show that we're creating this quote. It's really pretty simple here. Um, I basically have a condition. And then when, I, when that condition happens, we've got the ability to say, let's go ahead and create that record. And we're going to be able to plug in kind of like mail merge. If you're thinking about an email marketing automation system, we can plug in those values to be able to then generate that document. And this utilizes an integration with Google Docs. The great part is, is this is included with some of the plans available for Airtable. So you don't have to rely on a third-party integration system for this particular use case. And then over in my quotes folder that I told it to write to is where it's going to be able to take those records. And again, I made a super simple example here. 
uh, we can do a whole video dedicated to this where we can actually get into line items. So if you had different products and services you're selling, it can actually run through and push those out as well. So lots of options when it comes to it, but it's pretty impressive how slick it is, how quick it is to be able to send out those quotes and proposals as well. And now let's talk about, you know, we've kind of gone through the sales cycle so far. We probably want to talk a little bit more about what sales management can do, especially when it comes to forecasting. And so back in our data, you know, if we have opportunities, we're probably going to want to have our sales reps make a commit for the quarter. And so I just added a field here uh, called commit. And so you can check to say, yes, this is in commit for the quarter. Again, because we can see the activities of what's changed, we can see if things fall in and out of commit. But what this gives us the ability to do is Airtable has recently been working and investing a ton into this interfaces feature. It used to be that Airtable was pretty much confined to just a couple of these database views and was a little bit lacking on some of the visual appeal. But now with interfaces, you can create entire dashboards, reports, things that are really helpful to be able to have that more visual data. And so if I'm a sales manager and I now want to see, okay, what's our commit for the quarter? Now I can see here's the committed revenue. How much do we have closed one revenue so far for this quarter? How many committed opportunities do we have? What are our various um, stages within the pipeline? Where are our sales reps at? And again, I just made a really simple copy of a dashboard so that you can get a flavor of what you might be able to do. But know that this is now becoming more and more powerful. It's not just dashboards. You can create entire interfaces for you know, proposals and, and updating records and displaying things more visually to customers. So there's a lot of great options with interfaces, but I especially think it's been solving a big problem when it comes to the sales management side of things. And so I'm really excited to see them invest more into this area of the product. And now finally, where would we be if we didn't take the opportunity to celebrate our wins? So I created one more automation, which is going to be a win wire. So we're excited. We've closed out a deal. Let me go ahead and open up an opportunity. Let's say this ACE tube inquiry. Uh, and we're currently in qualification, but somehow we magically got past proposal evaluation negotiation and we are at closed one. So we are updating that record. And what that is doing is, ta-da, there's my doot -do -do Slack notification sound. And you'll notice that Hey, WinWire alert, congrats to Ari Ramirez Medina for closing the ACE tube inquiry. And here's the amount of ARR that we have. Pretty cool. We, again, we're able to tap into other integrations that we have. So let's take a look just really briefly at that last automation. So our WinWire automation. So when we enter a view of closed one with our opportunity, now we're able to use this Slack integration. I got to tell you, I just love the uh, amount of integrations that we have available to us. And similar to how we did for generating our quote, we're able to use kind of those merge tags or tokens to be able to put information in to dynamically populate that record to then send that win wire out. I'd love to hear from you what you're looking for in a CRM. Were we able to hit on some of the big things that make a CRM important to you? I'm always interested to hear more creative ideas to see if I can figure out and cook up some interesting solutions to your challenges. So feel free to comment down below with other things you're looking for in a CRM. Of course, if you're looking for any assistance in setting up your CRM, feel free to head on over to our website at automationhelpers.com. Happy to reach out and we'll connect there to be able to help you out with your CRM needs. Thanks.